Neil, Neil deGrasse, deGrasse Tyson, Tyson debunks, debunks outer, outer space. space. That's right, it's entropy. High pressure going to low pressure. It's a natural law, law of nature. You're describing laws of nature. How are you comparing this to Coriolis effect when the ball in the example here isn't actually curving? It only looks like it because you're turning beneath. But you're now describing the actual curve path of winds? Oh, well, then you're just thick. Maybe I've been too harsh on Tyson. He's just stupid. Oh, no, he deliberately described the fictitious force of the curve in Coriolis earlier. So, no, he's not thick. He's a charlatan, a fraud, a scammer, a scumbag, deceiving you all. He knew it was fictitious at the beginning of the description he gave. Now it's making a wind turn. That the Coriolis effect in this title? No. Lying bastard Neil deGrasse Tyson, actual force making this wind turn. And by the same token, a puff of Hang cloud. On, Nathan. Hang on, Nathan. Hang on. Don, he knows it's an optical illusion. He knew it from the beginning, so you're right. He is a lying bastard. No, he said he said on previous show that he will not debate flat earthers because they can be too charismatic. All I've seen you do is use the Socratic method. Is it the fictitious force that made the wind turn if you're imagining yourself to be a bloody cloud, hippie? North of that low pressure system. It all it too wants to reach the low pressure system. So it wants to reach the sky vacuum. The high pressure wants to reach the sky vacuum. That's a low pressure system. Trim that out. That's going to be trimmed out. Whenever the gas has got a pressure and volume, a gas that genie that got out of the bottle won't go back. This gas that came out won't go back. Take a gas, vacuum of equal volume, and we're going to remove the barrier. You know what's going to happen spontaneously, right? The gas is going to fill the available volume. Once it's is the expansion of a gas into a vacuum. I have in one of these bulbs some bromine and in the other I have a, a vacuum. And if I open the tap between these two, you will see spontaneously the bromine rush from one to the other. Now that is the simplest change we can have, perhaps, because all that happens is a change in entropy. In this case, the expansion into a vacuum, nothing else is involved. There's no energy change, there's no temperature change, there's no change except entropy. When you suggest that you have space, therefore second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply, it's a begging the question fallacy. So often I will ask fundamentalist religious zealots, beyond your fundamentalist religious zealot belief that the sky is a vacuum, how can you have gas pressure without a container? Because the natural instinct of a fundamentalist, globe-believing fundy, it's a bit redundant, <laughs> is to beg the question of the sky vacuum and then tell us that obviously the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply because the gas isn't filling my presupposition that the sky is a vacuum. Well, that's a begging the question fallacy. To assume that you've got a sky vacuum and therefore not require a justification for its violation of that particular law that would be an entropy increase or standard gas law. The volume that you would calculate it with would be the volume of space the gas has to fill. And if the sky was a vacuum, that would be an availability of volume for the gas we breathe to fill. And fill it it must. That's what gas does. It expands in all directions. So the gas we're breathing, which is at pressure, would fill the sky vacuum. Now their response is often to say, well, we have a gas pressure gradient which is merely a delta of the original question and assertion when you've got a sky vacuum belief. How can you have gas pressure in the first instance without a container? And they would say, well, a delta of gas pressure, gas pressure gradient is something we experience. It's like, well, how did you achieve the gas pressure in the first place without containment? And the answer is you can't. It stands directly in violation of several natural laws. Without the container, there can be no pressure. Therefore, if the sky was a vacuum, as asserted in the heliocentric rhetoric, then the gas we breathe would fill the space. Outer space, claimed to be a vacuum, is fake.
Therefore, any claims from that claim to be sky vacuum are automatically fake. Including, but not limited to, pictures of Earth from space. The region is fake, second law of thermodynamics violation. Therefore, the pictures claimed to have come from the fake region are also fake. Orbits in a sky vacuum, which is also a begging the question fallacy, which I won't detail now, is claimed to take place in a fake place called space. Therefore, automatically fake. Same goes for satellites. All debunked by the second law of thermodynamics and several other laws of nature, descriptions of how things occur always. Standard gas law, Boyle's law, Avogadro's law. These are all violated by the assertion that we have a sky vacuum we don't and any stage performance that comes from that region is also fake including the iss taking place on a stage on earth on high wire not in a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum you can't have orbital mechanics without an assumption of the r value and we've debunked it with the black swan but orbits is always going to be a begging the question policy to begin with nice that we can debunk it with one breath we debunked our bye-bye orbital mechanics, bye-bye globe Earth. Nathan Oakley, 1980. Follow his, uh, he does flat Earth debates every, uh, you know, Nathan Oakley is f my favorite right now. I love Nathan Oakley. Yeah, me too. He demolishes Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Uh, the low pressure system, and I find myself overtaking it. And I end up veering to the right. Mm -hmm. And by the same token, a puff of cloud north of that low pressure system it, all, it too wants to reach the low pressure system, except it's traveling slower. Than so it wants to, the high pressure system, go into the low pressure system. Right, Tyson? That's very interesting. So high pressure wants to go to low pressure. So if we had a sky vacuum, 10 to the minus 17 towards pretty low pressure, it would all want to go there then, wouldn't it, Tyson? Neil deGrasse Tyson debunks outer space. That's right, it's entropy. High pressure going to low pressure. It's a natural law, law of nature. You're describing laws of nature with your gas pressure for your hurricanes. And the description comes with the high pressure wanting to move to the low pressure in line with entropic law. Yeah, 10 to the minus 17 towards the lowest of low pressure in this example. All of the air you're breathing at high pressure would go into the sky vacuum according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, with an actual curve that has absolutely nothing to do with Coriolis effect, because he's a lying bastard. Sod all to do with what is titled this video. Then a low pressure system. So it, it goes south and it, and, it, and, and it lags behind. So all the air migrating north goes, ends up ahead of the storm, and all the air going south ends up behind the storm. You put all this together, you get and you've got an actual curved path of the wind that's got absolutely nothing to do with the fictitious force you described earlier. You charlatan. That's what we got when we put it all together. You greasing the skids for science with your sycophant, describing a fictitious force of something curving when it's actually moving straight, and then juxtaposing that with winds actually curving with an actual curved path. You lying charlatan magician. Yeah, we've put it all together for you, mate. And pointed out your scummy, scammy lies.